DIYers, hey, what's going on? Mike Boris with the Mike Boris channel. Thank you for watching. Today we are working on my dad's 1987 Gravely riding mower. It has the 18 horsepower Magnum Kohler engine. And in today's video, the proper and safe way on how to set your air gap on your newly installed or your existing ignition coil module. Let's get started. DIYs, we are on property at my parents, and again, in front of us is my dad's 1987 Gravely riding mower, and on the rear is the Magnum 18 Kohler engine. And check out our newly installed voltage regulator. And we used the Gravely specific coated red spray paint. Down below in the comments and description will be a link on where to purchase that. DIYs, we are doing a lot of videos on this engine. All right, DIYers, hey, a quick break in the action, and we're not going to bore you with removing this back panel or cowling. If you do want guidance on removing that back panel, definitely check out the link scrolling above, as well as down below in the comments and description, and it is titled, How to Replace Your Spark Plug Wires, Boots, and Ignition Coil, or Module, and you'll get to see the whole project at that point. However, in this video, we're just going to focus on setting the air gap for, in our case, our newly installed ignition coil. However, in your case, it may not be new. It might be your old or existing ignition coil. So with that said, from here, we'll head to the workbench, talk about the air gap that's in my dad's service manual from 1987. And then when we return to the tractor, this rear cowling or panel will be removed. We'll have the feeler gauge in hand and we'll get right to work. We are now going to set the gap. As you see, ignition module air gap. Follow the line. We are going to use our feeler gauge. All right, DIYers, hey, a quick break in the action, and I want to focus on the inches, not down below where it says mm or millimeters. I want to go back up where it says in dot or inches. And to the right of that, you see 0.008-0.012. And below that, in parentheses, you see 0 0.010 nominal. In DIYers, that's the dead center in between 0.008 and 0.012. Again, 0.010. So we are going to head back to the mower and grab our feeler gauge and use our 0 .010 feeler to again set the air gap for our newly installed ignition coil or module. And DIYers, just a heads up, if you skip this step, it's basically worse than just keeping your old one installed. Because if you remove the old ignition coil and install a brand new one and don't set the air gap, your ignition system and engine performance will degrade significantly. And chances are it might not even start after you put everything back together and that's not what you want. So again, very important step coming up. Camera position looking directly at the ignition coil or module. I have grabbed my feeler gauge and again the nominal is 0 .010. Let me try to give you a view of it. There it is. All right, DIYers, hey, another quick break in the action. And on the left-hand side or upper left corner, you see 0 .010. And directly below that, you see 0 .012. And that is the inch readings. However, to the right where you see 0.254 and below that 0 .305, and below that, mm, that is the millimeter readings. So in other words, inches on the left or larger numbers and millimeters to the right. However, we are referencing the 0 .010 upper left-hand corner of this exact feeler, again in inches. The way I'm going to do this, first I'm going to carefully rotate the flywheel and fan blade assembly clockwise until the rotor meets the coil. And go slow. No need to rush this. And here comes the rotor, as you see, this little block part here. Right in, and basically it's a magnet, so it's going to connect right there. And I want to center it basically right there in between both of them. And as you can see again, I have not tightened these bolts and it is spring loaded, again, magnetic. And we need to set the proper gap. And I'm going to start at the top. I'm going to just push this back and put the feeler gauge right inside there and basically lock it in place and tighten this down. Not all the way, but I want it tight. And I'm going to hold that in place and tighten it. From here, I want to come back in with the feeler and ensure that it can go in. There is a little bit of rubbing and that's okay. That's what you want. Now to the bottom. Coming in. Pull the back out. Loosen it just a little bit. And tighten it. From 
From here, you want to ensure that the rotor itself is not making direct contact with the ignition coil as it passes through, right like that. Try not to aggressively turn the engine backwards. You don't want that, but you just want to ensure that the gap is properly set and this rotor is not contacting these leads as it spins. That would damage both the rotor and the coil. And I'll set it back one more time and check the gap. And that is properly set and I will finalize tightening the bolts without over tightening them. One last check with the gap to ensure that the coil did not move as I tightened it. The gap is now properly set. All right, DIYers, hey, another quick break in the action, taking a step back. And again, we're just looking at the entire rear portion of the engine with that rear cowling or panel removed. We just finished up properly setting the air gap. That is extremely important to do to ensure that the operation of the ignition system is efficient and the timing of your engine is not interrupted or thrown off or interfered with as the flywheel spins and that rotor passes by the ignition coil extremely fast and at an enormous amount of times while the engine is up and running. So again, we wanted to show you that from here. We will put the spark plug boots back onto the spark plugs and re-secure the back panel or cowling. Take a step back and we are going to re-secure the negative cable to our battery. Back to the rear of the tractor, we are now going to start the engine and if all goes well, we are going to hand it back over to the owner, aka my dad, and he will take it for a test cruise. DIYers, we are back in the garage. The test drive went well. Got the thumbs up from Dad, and guess what's next? Check this out. And the old one basically is begging for replacement. It is all torn up and broken. Again, to a point where the grass screen basically came disconnected and shredded. Replacement parts down below in the comments and description, as well as a video on how to, again, properly replace those. Thanks again for watching. Do us a favor below the video. You will see the thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching. And again, that fresh paint looks good. And if you are wondering what this is, a belt goes in here and that part connects to it and inside here and it shoots the grass basically out of here through tubing and through that part and up and into a large trailer.